Hey you guys, this is Byron Aon Mulligan from Aon Soul, and I'm being asked some questions about tarot because tarot is very interesting. Please, let me tell you more. I guess what we want to know, um, what exactly is tarot? Uh, I couldn't really tell you in detail the history of tarot, but Google can share that with you. Um, in terms of what tarot is though, and it being a tool, it's probably one of the most functional tools that we can work with um, to communicate with other people outside of verbal communication uh, because it is a visual tool and because it is so rich in symbolism and colour and, and other things that we may use as a communication and engagement tool with others. Um, it can be an alternative way outside of words to uh, connect to people via their stories and their narrative, to connect to points in their history and even just to cut through to the truth of certain issues or of what's going on faster than what they might be able to articulate verbally. Uh, so it's a great engagement and communication tool as a way to um, really get to the point sometimes. So if you go in for a reading with someone who's going to read cards for you, what can you basically expect? It's hard to say what you could expect. Um, you could go to a hundred different tarot readers and they would all read completely differently. Um, I, I guess there might be pros or cons within that, but generally uh, most card readers from my experience will be there first and foremost to guide you in what you are needing at this point. Um, the way that they do that, however, might be a little different. Uh, a lot of readers will read for you in a fashion that is more kind of psychic or, um, or clairvoyant. They're drawing information from spirit or from their guidance and sharing direction and guidance with you in a, in a kind of a psychic or intuitive way, um, more so than a counseling or a directive way. Um, it very much is kind of a psychic activity and that is largely what most people expect when they go for a reading and what most readers kind of do. Um, of course you don't have to read that way. Um, tarot is also a, a tool that might be used in very uh, very traditional counselling and traditional therapeutic kind of engagement with client as well. So there is really no requirement for you to have any psychic or intuitive skills or any uh, extrasensory powers when working with tarot. It can be worked within those fields but really you could see any tarot reader and they might work um, completely differently to another reader. Uh, generally though of course the goal is to assist you with the problem or to assist you with your direction at, at this point in your life. If it's so variable in the reading styles is there anything that I should look for or steer clear of in a reader to keep a session more healthy? Uh, your own intuition in how you um, in how you sense people uh, is first and foremost. Um, think about the way that we generally meet people in our day. You know when you have a good vibe for someone or not, uh, and you know when someone feels true and feels trustworthy or not. All of your senses will tell you if someone that you meet is a good match for you or not. Um, my caution around seeing a reader would just to not be uh, not to feel obliged to actually pay money to someone that you don't feel a match with um, just because you're there for an appointment. Um, if that person is not the right person for you and you know it, my my advice to you would be to maybe pause that for a while um, and to maybe not sit with that reader. Uh, my advice is that people are like products. And in terms of services, it is good to shop around and it is good to find the right person that is right for you as you would choose one product over another, knowing that for now that person might be right for you. But again, just like some products, uh, after a time that, pro that product might need changing, it might not suit you. So for now, uh, really work with your own inner guidance around what feels right for you and don't feel pressured or obligated to have to follow through with a session um, using a service that you know it really isn't ideal. There are millions of readers around, uh, various styles and so forth, so you don't really have to feel locked into any one person in particular. Um, other things just to be aware of, of course, is the level of helpfulness that that person is giving you, and you'll generally know not too far into the, uh, into the session whether that person is really hitting the mark for you. Now, what do I mean by hitting the mark? Um, if they are a psychic reader, uh, obviously hitting the mark means accuracy to a degree, and they are giving you information that, apart from its helpfulness, um, will be absolutely accurate and true and correct, and you will know it. Um, 
But of course, apart from accuracy, you're also looking for some helpfulness um, because they're charging you money. And so you want to leave with a bit of clarity or a bit of what it is that you're after. And so accuracy as well in terms of helpfulness and hitting the mark where it is allowing you to see your situation or problem a little more clearly and you have more of a plan A or plan B when you leave. Um, the one thing that I tell people a lot around readers is that most of them are, are reading for the sake of entertainment value. Um, it really is a psychic exercise, which is agreed on by a lot of clients as well, where the entire reading is really just to kind of blow you away and um, with the information that a reader can uh, ascertain from wherever they gather their information from. And for the end of that reading, for clients to go, whoa, that was just amazing and that reading was incredible and they knew all of this stuff and all of this stuff and it and so forth. Um, but my question to those people um, is that, well, how clear are you on, on your life right now? How clear are you on the stuff that you were murky with only an hour ago? Um, uh, have you come to a conclusion and a clear decision? Do you feel more motivated? Um, have you solved a problem? Have you found an answer? Uh, because while someone might be profoundly psychic and amazing with their information and very insightful, and that is a genuine skill, it has no automatic bearing on the usefulness of that reading. And I believe if someone is to charge you money for a reading or any sort of a service, there is a service, there is a, a duty of care within that to, um, to be of value for money. <laughs> and so your expectation as a client is one thing, but you really want to leave um, feeling a little clearer and feeling a little better, better with what is true. So then would it be beneficial as a client to get more clear about the things that I want to know and have specific questions prepared for my reader before I go in? Always. Uh, it is always uh, based on the clarity of the person themselves seeking support or information to the level in which they will receive what it is they are after. Now, that's not to say that you need to know exactly what it is that you want. You're seeking a reading because you're really not ultimately clear on what that is. Um, I guess the real issue from my lifetime of working professionally is that many clients will quite consciously not disclose information to a reader um, for the purpose of them for the purpose of them getting it um, because they want to hear that information back and so being clear um, when you are looking for a reading is really important knowing exactly what it is that you want out of that session um, what your landscape of issues might happen to be what your main issue might happens to be whether it's to solve a problem to make a decision to make a choice whatever uh, whatever that is it's good to have put some thought into that so that you know in that session if that reader hits the mark for you and gives you the answer you will know it's the answer and so you can say thank you that's what i came for you just gave it to me <laughs> um, so certainly be clear in your own um, in your own um, needs for your reading as well so that you have an expectation of having your needs met um, but again just the, the communication clarity from the reader themselves is also a part of that so do um, do communicate a little more before you just just jump straight into a paid reading so then how exactly do cards work how can a tarot deck lend advice or guidance to me in an area where I may need um, information or be conflicted and need to make a decision? Yeah. Um, first and foremost, I would say that they can't. Um, they're cardboard <laughs> and they can't do anything. And I know that might sound silly for people, but I say that uh, in, in all seriousness because tarot uh, has been imbued and bestowed with various mystical powers, um, that it has all sorts of energies and um, all sorts of attributes and, and qualities and so forth. Um, I don't really apply to any of that. Um, there's a lot of rules and, and stuff around tarot, how to use them, how to work with them, how to touch them, not touch them, all of that. And that's fine, like all of that belief system is fine, but it is fair to say that you can also work with tarot highly effectively and not apply to any of that stuff either. Um, so, I mean, that's just one of the, the kind of the basics. Um, what else? Well, I guess one of the things that we're wondering would be, just a little more information on the deck itself. Let's take, for instance, a traditional tarot deck. Yeah. How many cards are there and what sort of cards can I expect to see? Sure. Um, a traditional tarot deck is made up of 78, uh, 78 cards 
and it's broken into two sections called the major and the minor arcana. Uh, there are 22 major cards and 56 minor cards. And the reason that they are broken up um, in that way is that they reflect the, the major and the minor uh, aspects of our life or the inner and the outer aspects of our life. The major cards are about the overarching forces at play within our life, within our self. Um, the principles, the concepts, the energies that are moving through, um, the processes that are sort of moving through our life as we notice them. Um, not the details per se, the overarching trends and phases that we're in right now, um, the things that we're noticing overall. Uh, the minor cards are the details in our day. They're the ways that those forces sort of play out into our life. And so there are a lot more minor cards in the ways and the expressions that the larger forces in our life um, tend to find themselves and we see them working during our day. So the major cards, are the 22 major arcana, are all individual cards and each one of those will convey a very specific force or attribute or quality of the universe, if you like. Things like unity and partnership, collaboration, justice, equality, uh, spiritual growth, wholeness and conclusion, uh, illusion, all of those natural things, forces of those nature that we will see in our day, but they are forces and attributes in themselves. And so we might see them play out in certain ways or that two people might experience the, uh, the force of law and balance in completely different ways in their life, even though they are experiencing the same force. Each card in the Major Arcana is one of these forces or attributes of life or of the universe. The Minor Arcana, as I said, are the expressions and the multiple expressions and the ways that those forces can manifest in our world and manifest in our observable life. And the Major and the Minor Arcana are broken down into four separate suits, just like a normal playing deck. And those four suits are founded upon the four elements, earth, air, fire and water. And the four traditional suits that are attributed to those elements in a tarot deck is for fire, we have wands. For earth, we have pentacles. For water, we have cups. And for air, we have swords. All four of those tools represent those four elements. And each of those four elements represent aspects of us and aspects of our life. Fire, for example, within ourselves is our will, our energy, the force in which we approach our goals and the things that we want out of life. It is the fire behind what we do, not necessarily the actions. In our life, fire can also be a high level of action. It can be a level of energy and collaboration with other people. It's movement and action. So each element may be attributed archetypically, both internally and externally to our world. And the minor arcana are attributing all four of these elements in the many ways that we can see that play out in our life. So in a reading, you will get a combination of both major and minor cards. And it is up to the skill of the reader to know the tarot and to be able to then synthesize and interpret the combination of cards that, that we have pulled for your reading to be able to convey them to you in a meaningful and truthful way that will provide for you an accurate message for what you're needing right now. And typically all of those cards in the combination that they have come out with will provide a very clear picture and insight into what is happening for you right now in a direction that is in your best interest to go. So then do you think it would help to have a little bit of knowledge of some of those cards for myself before I go into a reading with someone else? Uh, it's not at all necessary for a client to have any, uh, any understanding of tarot. Sometimes it, uh, I've observed it actually working against clients who do know tarot and read for themselves. And so when they see cards being pulled for them, they are reading for themselves based on what they know those cards to mean. Um, tarot is a very subjective skill. And as I said before, a hundred different readers will read a hundred different ways. And it is very uh, common for individual tarot cards to have multiple meanings available per card as well as the different ways individual readers will read and perceive those cards too. 
And so bringing your own awareness of tarot to a reading um, may or may not be, um, be of benefit to you, particularly if you're watching someone reading for you and in your mind that person is interpreting the cards completely different to you and therefore incorrectly um, because it is such a subjective skill and such a subjective activity um, it really is not a requirement and i would really suggest to people going for a reading to suspend all judgment to suspend all of your knowledge and awareness and thoughts and everything going in um, as a client, you are there to receive. As a client, you are the student. Um, you are not there to judge or bottleneck your situation. There's no point in paying for money with a reading with someone else and trying to do it yourself. Um, it is, in my opinion, best to be as a receiver uh, in the position of a client. Even if you do have knowledge or skills of tarot yourself, try and put that on pause and just be open to what you hear, for that's why you're there. That's excellent advice. Thank you. So what would what type of reader? You mentioned that there were more psychic and more practical readers. What type of reader are you? Um, I've been reading tarot for around 25 years and been doing all types of readings that you have heard of and can think of. Um, um, psychometry and clairvoyant and tarot and all sorts of all sorts of readings, really whatever people um, are needing at any given time is the style of work that I might do uh, and work with with a client. Because the reason why um, that is and the way that I, I move between those skill sets is because first and foremost, my agenda is client-centered. Uh, it's not about anything that I know or don't know or do or can do or can't do. All I'm interested in personally is what does this client need most right now and I would never assume to know that <laughs> um, so the first thing that I would sit with with a client is to ask them very clearly like what is happening for you right now what do you need um, my style of reading is very client centric it is not reader centric where I am giving you my best and showing you what I've got and hoping to impress you um, because while I might do that I uh, it is very important for me that you don't leave a reading saying that was amazing he just blew my mind but i'm still completely lost i don't know what to do um, that to me is an absolute tragedy um, and a complete waste of money so very unprofessional um, my my focus first and foremost in readings is to be useful and functional for you utilizing the many many tools on my tool belt that i've acquired in my professional life um, understanding that many of those tools are of a psychic and spiritual nature and many of them are very real um, and very tangible and um, and very practical skills in engagement and communicating with people and that my tool belt is available to me at any given time so i try not to box myself as a type of reader um, i am here as a healing facilitator and as a bringer of clarity and uh, really i think that is the most accurate and authentic i can state Thank you for that. Um, one more question and then we'll wrap up. Um, would you be interested in facilitating an online teaching series for those of us who might want to learn more in depth and how to read cards, maybe in the way that you do? Would you be interested in teaching? And then if we wanted a personal reading from you, how could we get in touch with you for that? Yeah, um, I'm always available for both of those. I love working with Tarot and if, uh, if anyone is keen to learn more about tarot and, and working with tarot professionally, which is uh, not scary and very simple to do, um, I, would love to, um, I would love to teach you uh, really anything that I have learned in my time so that you can work with this tool effectively for yourself, um, just personally or professionally in a way that you can incorporate into your business. It really is a fantastic and useful engagement skill in working with clients in a healing and therapeutic way um, and there is always more to learn uh, both personally and with the cards themselves so if anyone is interested in learning tarot um, please message me via the own soul page it would be a pleasure um, to put a group together and to um to deliver a class for everyone and we'd be able to do that online uh, we'd probably take a few hours it'd be very simple and we'd have a great time doing it um, but for personal readings, again, this is um, part of the work that I do and I offer this work seven days a week. So if anyone's interested in, um, in connecting with me for a personal reading, uh, I charge $150 for my readings and we have no time limit. So we can get into absolutely anything that you like. 
and if you feel that I can be of some support for you and then offer you some clarity in um, in the way that I work, then please again message me via Aeon Soul and I would, um, would be very happy to sit with you and honoured to help you gain some clarity and find what you're needing right now. Well, thank you, Byron. I look forward to speaking to you again soon. Pleasure. Thank you so much for your time. Cheers, guys. Bye.